Welcome everybody to Kinda Funny Games Daily. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Forbes, 30 under 30. Which one's it gonna be? Which one's it gonna be? Which one's it gonna be? AKA the second best baby blues, AKA the verified one at Tim Gettys. Let Tim host. Alongside Forbes, 30 under 30, AKA the future class of video games. Blessing, Eddie Oye Jr. What's up, Greg? What is up is this. Here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. As you may or may not know, we have something called patreon.com slash kind of funny. It keeps the lights on. It keeps the mics on. Uh, the November item, if you supported us in November, of course, for the platinum thing, was you get a holiday card from us. We're going to take a big holiday photo. We're going to send it out as a card. You'll get it this month. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Everybody sells the holidays. The message has been for two weeks now to come dressed in a Christmas sweater. To come dressed in a Christmas sweater. Blessing shows up. Dressed like he's on the cover of GQ. That's the problem. This I, isn't. I, this is a Christmas all I heard was sweater. photo shoot. I didn't hear anything I, else. Honestly, it's a good like holiday look though. With That's the what I'm saying. And the jacket and and Greg, it's not particularly you have to come in a Christmas sweater because Christmas accessories are here for people who don't want to come. In and Christmas no one sweaters. was saying it's not a good look. It's a great look. I'm sick I'm of just, blessing mm. stepping up. How good we have to look on these shows. I can do a costume change. I'm gonna, can I touch your neck? Yeah, is it yeah, what? Yeah, is this terry cloth? Oh my goodness! Is wool? Yeah. This is, this, I don't think it's wool. Whatever okay. it is, it's comfortable. Though. It's very comfortable yeah. looking. Tim, touch his neck. Yeah, touch my neck, Tim. Yeah, that's yeah. It's warm. Yeah. yeah, I love this thing. I'm a fan of the warm. And you're telling yeah, me you're going to look better than this for the Game Awards this week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. Oh I got God. my outfit picked out. It took oh me a while. God. I was between quite a few different configurations. Did you ever help Greg? No. I did not help oh, Greg. Wow. No. I, you know, ran out of time. Jen found two vests in the attic, and I was like, maybe I want to wear a vest this year. And then oh. yesterday, she's like, I'm going to Nordstrom. Should I look for anything? I'm like, I try to find me a vest. She's like, there's no vest. I'm like, all right, I'll figure it out on the day. I hear when John Boyega is going to the Oscars, he always he always goes to Nordstrom <laughs> beforehand <laughs> <laughs> to figure out his outfit. Where'd you get your outfit? Uh, ASOS. <laughs> yeah, see, you can get out of here acting like it's your It's better than Nordstrom. Better. Is, I don't even know what ASOS is. I mean, I should. Sure, I've never I'm been to sure Nordstrom. Nordstrom, Nordstrom can be Nordstrom, very nice. There's nothing wrong with Nordstrom at all. <laughs> so if you're out of like Nordstrom is a department store. Maybe like your Macy's. But like a, fan, but like a higher end, I would say, right? Is yeah. it? I don't know. It's, it, it's in a mall. It's a. It's a, It's in a mall. It, it's in a it's mall. like higher, but it's the highest. You know what no, I mean? It's a, yeah, way yeah. above Macy's, but yeah. like below Bloomingdale's. Oh, okay. that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, you know, I've I've been looking. I've been trying to figure. I've, I've been. I, I've had a gap open up in my day today, where I might try to run out and try to find it today. Get a new oh. shirt. Do today, a new shirt and tie or something. I gotta, I gotta do something. Are you, are you thinking Nordstrom or are you thinking Macy's? I don't even know what's or around Bloomingdale's. us. Something's got to be around us. You know what I'm I mean? Thinking Arby's. You thinking Arby's, Tim? Tim, why aren't you dressed in anything? You're just wearing a San Francisco shirt. You think it's you're cool? It's a sweater. Is that what you're wearing in the Christmas shoot? Yeah. Oh, you Grinch. What the shit? You Grinch. Yeah, me and Tim ass. heard the same thing. All I heard was sweater, Tim, and I was like, like, I got you, know, you on that sweaters. Not big enough. But here's the is thing. That a big enough head? The thing about it is this: you look like you are on the cover of a Hallmark Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. You're the guy, the girl comes back from, she's working in the city, and she comes back home and finds out you're an elementary school teacher. You never <laughs> left. You were a, there was a whole would they, wouldn't they thing back in oh, the yeah. day. Oh, yeah. How do I reach these kids? some weird fucking relationship. This guy sucks. Yeah. And you're going to win her back. I hope so. I hope so, Greg. Okay. I'm rooting for you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have too much to talk about to keep bullshitting around about how good Blessing looks. Why don't we instead talk about the fact? But there's a new Last of Us HBO trailer, Jedi Survivor's release date's been revealed, and so much more, because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, please write in for free to be part of the show with today's topics and headlines over at kindoffunny.com slash kfgd. Then, of course, you should get the show on patreon.com slash kindoffunny. Over on patreon.com slash kindoffunny, you can get each and every episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily ad free you can get a bevy of exclusive content including 38 exclusive episodes of content all on patreon.com slash kind of funny and of course you can watch us record things like the kind of funny podcast this afternoon live as we record them without ads all on patreon.com slash kind of funny However, if you have no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. There are numbers of free ways to support us. Of course, write in, like I said, kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. But to pay the bills, why don't you use your Twitch Prime subscription? Give that to us. If you're watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames or youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames and listening on podcast services around... The Globe. Of course, if you're using the Epic Game Store or playing a game that uses the Epic Game Store, like Fortnite, Rocket League, or Rumbleverse, use the creator code KINDAFUNNY, and we get a little bit of a kickback, and it's very, very nice. 
housekeeping for you. Uh, Dead Space creator and Striking Distance Studios lead Glenn Schofield joined us for a Callisto Protocol sponsored spoiler cast, and it's up right now on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames and podcast services around the globe. Great news. I am one trophy away from my platinum. Oh. I'm making my way through the collectibles and Callisto and having a great time. Uh, right after Kind of Funny Games Daily, Jeff Grubb, Tamar Hussein, and the Raiders take on James, Elise, Bruce Green, and the Chargers in today's KFFL. Game two will feature your 9 and 2 Kind of Funny 49ers taking on the 11 and 0 Dolphins. Can you believe it? Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, Delaney Twining, One Up Pest Control, Gwyneth, uh, Brian Cheney, Alex Greedle, Jason L., Mick at Dananobiologist, Abramson, Derek Gregg, uh, Donald Eccles, and Jason L. Today we are brought to you by Shady Rays, Rocket Money, and Factor. But we'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. Nine items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen! Yeah, you gotta work for it sometimes, Barrett, you know? I mean, like, in the middle of it, it's just like, please release me from this, from <laughs> this, this prison. pain that's going on in this prison that you put me in. As you all know, I led the Mizzou Antlers. I, I was in charge of that student group at Mizzou. And we would always, uh, once the game started, a basketball game would start, Tim, you would chant, please stand to the first Tiger basket. And you would do it the whole time, and there'd be half of the group that went, "Please stand for the, let's, uh, please stand for the first Tiger basket." And was, Let's go, Antlers! Please stand. And then you did them, and it would be we, uh, the team wasn't always great, mm. and we would be screaming that for quite some time. And there Locked. would be parts where you're screaming, to p- "Please stop!" Who's in the basket? Box? Huh? Who's in the box? Everyone's chanting about people in the box. What's in the what's box? What's in the box? You want to scream about the box? What are you talking about? World Cup stuff. I don't understand what's happening. Let me tell you, Japan the World just Cup lost to Croatia. We're done. We don't need to talk uh, about no, it. No, it's still good. The World Cup is actually on fire no, it's right over. now. It's we're over. In the, we're in the top 16. But the also, US? all, no, no, all no, the. No, no. Well, over. US is out. Yeah, USA is out. And listen, that means we so all root over. for Japan, except for the fact that Japan just got out. <laughs> Story number one on the Roper Report, ladies and gentlemen. Over the weekend, The Last of Us official trailer dropped from HBO and Neil Druckmann. Just those two people. Uh, and we put it out on the Slack. We said, should we should we watch this? Do we not watch it? What do we do? We decided not to watch it. All three of us have not watched this. We will react live right now with it. I am very hype. It seems like everybody loved it. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I, I, I was off Twitter. All, I was playing games all weekend, Greg. Miller. Well, you know what I was playing? Oh, yeah. I was playing Pokemon. I have now officially played Scarlet and Violet more than any Pokemon game in history. I looked wow. at my state. Wow. Really? Oh. Yeah. Wow. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. I thought you were going to say like any modern Pokemon. More th- no than any. Because I have my old save save file, so I got to see the time. Sure, sure, sure. What's your uh, save file uh, then? I'm just over sixty hours. Okay. I'm not that. In- mm-hmm. I'm not. You know, there's way many people out there that are going to dwarf that entirely. Sure, but no, I'm just. You weren't like replaying Pokemon Blue and Pokemon Gold back in the day. Oh, you know what? Okay, I probably played Blue Way yeah. more just for like my one save. At least this is the most on one save file. Fair, All okay, right? that makes sense. And I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot more. But um, I also played Super Kiwi 64. We'll talk about oh, that yeah. during the Out Today section later. And the last thing I did, Need for Speed Unbound. Oh, Which, God, what a delight. What a cringy, cringy delight. Oh, my you know God. Yes. I can't we'll wait to talk about, about later. that later. So I wasn't even on Twitter. I don't even know what people were thinking about this, but I imagine they loved it. Yeah, apparently, yes. Where was it? Brazil? Was that where they were at for this thing? There's something going on. There's oh, the Comic Con. Yeah, the whole team was down there. The whole thing. Neil Druckmann was there. The biceps on Neil. You know oh, what I mean? Let's keep getting bigger. Stopping, dude. Uh, getting worried. Anyways, I digress. Let's watch this trailer together. Bear, I don't think we have sound. We're not hearing it. That's a big problem for Bear, Tim. bear, we ain't got no sound, bear, bear. But that's, there it is. <laughs> Boston right there. Damn. The bean. The bean? Still no sound. That looks like it's pulled right from the game. That's interesting. Why would it be? <laughs> <laughs> do we need, like, do we need a remote for the TV? Does the TV need to be? Oh, there there it is. Your fiance is hope for the world. Why bother going on? You haven't seen the world. Stop the clicking. So you don't know. You keep going for family. I'm not family. No. She was your cargo. The music is the chord progression of the, the theme. Somewhere out west. They're working on a cure. Oh my god. What really impressed them was the fact that I didn't turn into a monster. If she so much as twitches. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's awesome. 
taking you with me. Do what I say. No what future I say. spoilers. You got any advice on the best way west? Yeah, go east. That guy, I like that guy. You've come this far, then you know what's out there. You're not gonna scare us. Scared him? You have a greater purpose than any of us could have ever imagined. Ashley. Be careful who you put your faith in. Oh, man. This I'm is not ready to hurt. hurt. Man, I'm not ready to hurt. It's your son's. He looks a lot like uh, Sam or Henry, which, whichever one it was. I think Sam was the big All right, dude. Ooh. Fuck yeah. Oh, oh, let's go. Is that a bloater? Fuck yeah. Holy that shit. That looks amazing, Fuck dude. Yeah. Everything about that looks great. The, my favorite shot is the um, left behind shot of them in the mall. Yeah, 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 on. yeah. That yeah, looks yeah, yeah, yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, worth pointing out, yeah, Ashley has the baby there. And then uh, Troy is in the group on horseback here. Oh, shit. Uh, right there, not horseback. Yeah. Sorry, right there with the machine with guns. Bam, Davis there's group. Troy. Hey! Oh, that's awesome. Fucking rad, dude. Yeah, if you want, can you can you roll it back to Ashley with the baby? Uh, bear, bear. Damn, so that's David. That's creepy shit <laughs> that's perfect yeah this man looks like he's gonna play that role real well <laughs> there's ashley ashley hey, so, oh, shit. ellie herself with the baby who you assume i don't think it's been confirmed confirmed but playing uh ellie's mom you think so i would think so yeah, I mean, yeah. but you think right there's like a flashback sequence yeah there was one which shot is such this... a nice way to do it too oh yeah no that's that's perfect like such a such a great homage and also building out the characters too like I, there's a couple characters in this that i don't remember from the game was the Go West, Go East guy? That guy was not in the game. And no, they have they said at the, again, correct me if I'm wrong, kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. I think it was Comic-Con Brazil or San pa Sao Paulo, C Brazil, right? CCCXP, I think is what it was. Okay, it well, they're at CCCXP. And uh, they were talking about the fact that things that got cut from the game are in this. Oh, so interesting. that's why like, fans will still be, if, if you love the game, you'll still see stuff over yeah. there. Yeah, we're doing the, the read-through of people. When they're releasing the character posters, right, we're reading through each of the characters. And they did talk about like a, a couple of characters that weren't in the game that are going to be new for this. And so... Very interested to see what roles they play in the story. Right? Yeah, and the, there definitely seems to be more with like Bill. Like I think this is probably Bill's partner. Like I, we we might get a full on like Frank. Bill episode. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right. There's one shot in the in, somewhere in the middle of the trailer where we see like a bunch of people. It looks like they're excited at a concert, but it might just be them scared. During I, the yeah. Day. Well, I thought they were. For me, it looked like they were like chanting like a rally kind of thing. Maybe it's um. You know, whatever sprint, splinter group. Maybe it's them overthrowing uh, the people inside of Boston. You know how they had they were oh yeah law in Boston yeah they're holding like guns and shit in there. yeah because <laughs> you figure like with the the uh, what do you call it the uh, magic of TV shows I guess we could still know we could still find out what's going on in Boston like if they want to have those characters introduced and we can still touch mm -hmm. base on them and see what's going on after Joel and Ellie leave which we really didn't get before oh that's a good point the winter but, segment uh, or sorry go for it no, I, I'm just kidding. but they also you know maybe they don't do that at all and they keep it on Joel and Ellie the entire way. The winter segment is interesting. A bear, if you're able to, to scroll back, because in the scene, it looks like Joel and Ellie are like surrounded uh, uh, by these burglars, by these guys. And there's not really a, a moment in winter that that happens, right? Because yeah. it is, you start off and <clears throat> Joel's away, right? And Ellie's doing her thing, trying to take care of Joel. If and you then wanna... Ellie runs into David and then Joel wakes up and then has to go after Ellie. There's not a moment where this is happening. My thoughts here are that's the group of the guy of the Go East, Go West guy who's in a million things. And I'm sorry, I don't know his name off the top of my uh, head. Got it. But I, I would say that, like, right, it looks like this would probably be his troop, right? Because, again, like, the magic of uh, making this more real and setting it with real people, right, is I don't think you get the chance to do the jumps. Like, I don't think we're going to end an episode and then jump ahead of season, right? And mm -hmm. they've, they've made up. I think we're going to have to be with them the entire way across the country. And so I think you have to have more people, more groups, more things they run into. So yeah. you think the the university sequence happens later on in the, the yeah, season? Yeah, I, I don't think we've met Bill, and I don't think we're in the university scene yet here. Uh, okay. Oh, but you don't think we've met uh, Bill here? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, David. David. Gotcha. Sorry, oh, David. Okay, okay. okay. See, I would have, I would have thought, you know, by that logic, maybe this is after oh, Joel saves after. Ellie. Yeah, See, yeah, yeah. Now stick with. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, while well, I was thinking, yeah, Joel saves Ellie. They, you know, finish the whole scenario sure. with David, and then this is them on their way to whatever they're, they're doing next. You can call me the Michael Jordan of Rewind Theaters and Predictions. Here's what happens. This is the immediate precursor to that because 
the guy says in there, or maybe it was the woman. I forget. I'm sorry, but like, uh, you, you've been out there, you know, you know, you can't scare. And then Ellie's like, you can't scare us. And she goes, scared him. She's talk. They're referencing the cannibals. They're referencing David's group. Mm. Right. Well, Cause at this point you've gone through all these horrors of the clickers and everybody else. What's the, something that could be even worse people who eat each other. Right. And are horrible. When they meet Tommy was, that Tommy. was, that was not winter, right? No, no, that no. was way earlier. That was, that, that was earlier. at the dam. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I wonder if it's going to follow the season format, which I guess it probably will. Does this go through the whole game or does it stop at some point? I it mean, looks see, seeing it this far, right? Like, I think if you're getting David, I would think that, yeah, you're <clears throat> you're getting the whole game. Because what David is the the season before, I guess, yeah, winter before spring, right? And spring is where the game ends. And there's not that much game yeah, left, spring left is after. Like really, really short. It's pretty yeah. much just the hospital. So, And so I would think that, yeah, well, you're probably like going to carry Greg this forward. Saying, like with cut, to- uh, cut content and actually like following them in between um, the kind of cuts that happen in the game, I could see... Yeah, I don't know. That's so interesting. Michelangelo in the chat says, uh, "Amazing said it's all of part one." So yeah, oh, wow, back, man, wow, 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 wow. It, This looks fantastic. I'm so happy HBO is doing it. I'm so happy that Neil is as much of a part as he is. Like this just looks like so much love and care is being put into it. Take on me being used, obviously, a, a nod to Last of Us Two. Love that stuff. There's just so much care being put into the world because they're the people that that, that shot there looks right out of the game. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing that I find impressive is the fact that. You know, when I think of The Last of Us, just stylistically and like how they build the world visually, yeah. I just think of, you know, it's a post-apocalyptic world, right? It's post-apocalyptic America, Boston, all that stuff. Seeing it represented in the sh- in the show, I think, you know, kind of displays the fact that, no, this the game has a visual identity, yeah. right? Like, I look yeah, at yeah, even, yeah, like, yeah. the debris on the stairs that they're climbing up, and I'm like, yeah, that reminds me of the game, right? Like, seeing the shots of the city and, like, the the dilapidation, right? I'm like, this reminds me of the game. Even how this looks in winter, right? See, like, now the this outfits. is making me want to play Last of Us Remake. Yeah. <laughs> that's why they fucking re- publish it, part one. That's why they fucking publish part one on PS5. Now I'm like, fuck, maybe I want to go and play that. Like, all of this <laughs> looks very Last of Us to me. Yeah, 100%. I got I, Sam and Henry. That's going to destroy me, dude. For sure. For sure. I just can't wait for people to experience this for the first time in yeah. this way. Like, yeah. It just looks like... It's that also pulled really right from the game that we've talked about that before. Uh, oh, more with Bill there. That's interesting. Have they said how many episodes it is? Nine. Because that is wow. a lot to cover in nine episodes, which makes me wonder if they are if they do do the season thing, because I feel like that would be the yeah. easier way to yeah, jump I around. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you would be... Because yeah, they're, they're showing, imagine. like, they're getting deeper with uh, like Bill and Frank, right? They're introducing mm-hmm. characters that weren't in the game. I'll think that if you're going to do that, maybe it is... Because you have a whole year that you have to work with here. I'll think that, yeah, you are jumping time. Oh. Yeah. We won't have to I, wait I, I long to find right. out. Yeah. And Just I, a little over a month. The, you know, when you, you think about, like, game length and stuff, they're probably making up for, like, how much you're actually, like, playing the game and walking around and wandering around and sure. stuff, like, with the stuff. Crafting like, and picking shit like yeah, that up. Yeah, you know, like, you're not getting as uh, as much of that. So you have to imagine, like, how long the actual story is and those story beats in the game. Mm-hmm. I don't think it'll be super hard to do. I mean, Lanky Dragoon brings up a good point. It's all part one and left behind. Yeah. And That's bonus true. content. So. That's true. But again, if you're oh. not sitting there skirm- going through every goddamn drawer looking for <laughs> yeah. pieces yeah. of scissors, maybe you're not going to do Yeah, I can't get over how good Bella Ramsey looks as Ellie. She looks so much like Ellie. Yeah. And I like, I mean, I like the performance so far just seeing in the trailer, right? Her, her doing the, uh, like, acting like the clicker, yeah, right? Yeah, and, like, cute, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. having that funny moment there and people being like, hey, man, <laughs> like, calm down. Like, I think that's a pretty, a funny beat that I think works as Ellie, right? Ellie is that kid that is you know, lighthearted, likes to have fun, and likes to, like, poke fun, even though she can be serious in those moments, so. I also, I didn't know the woman from Fringe was going to play uh, Tess. That's cool. From Friends? Fringe. Oh, Fringe. I was like, who? <laughs> what Friends character? <laughs> 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 I can't fucking wait. Oh, I can't yeah. fucking wait. I've been saying for it's going to be a banger, and now you look at this, it's going to be a banger. I we we will be doing weekly screencast uh, reactions to every episode on of this show. Greg Miller will Ooh, be on Can them. I be on them? Son, bless, you can. Oh, hell yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, you got to dress yeah. me for all nine episodes. All right, I got you. You got to play. If you want me to do that, though, you got to play Last of Part 1 all the way through. Okay, get all the trophies. Get a platinum. You gotta I got to platinum it. it, too. Yep. You have to. Yep. Greg. You have to. Fair enough. You, have to. you drive a hard bargain, but I appreciate it. Uh, everybody, that's a wrap on Blessing for story number one. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, it looks like you need to send me the one, the only, the master of hype, Snowbike Mike, the, the host of the Kind of Funny X cast. Why for story could we number possibly two. need Mike? Why could we possibly? Oh, Jesus, God. Is he dressed up too? <laughs> He's in another turtleneck? How many turtlenecks do these people have in this house? But what, uh, Is he still wearing shorts? No, like, unfortunately, he's not. Coming in off the sidelines of KFFL here, the seasoned reporter. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, 
Story number two on Europa Report. Microsoft is raising prices on new first-party games built for Xbox Series X slash S to $70 in 2023. This is Rebecca Valentine at IGN.com. Xbox is preparing to join other major games publishers in raising the prices of its major new first-party titles from $60 to $70. Beginning in 2023, games built for Xbox Series X slash X, including Forza Motorsport, Redfall, and Starfield, will cost $69.99 US dollars at launch. Uh, while Xbox has noted that regional pricing may differ, it has not yet given specifics on other countries. Quote, the price reflects the content scale and technical complexity of these titles, a Microsoft spokesperson told IGN. As with all games developed by our teams at Xbox, they will also be available with Game Pass uh, at the same day as they launch, end quote. The price increase is unsurprising, given that earlier this year, Xbox head Phil Spencer said that the company wouldn't be able to hold its prices forever, but that Xbox would not raise prices ahead of the 2023 holiday season. Xbox is also not the first company to have done this. Sony, Ubisoft, and Take-Two Interactive have announced $70 price points for certain new games, and Sony specifically has reported discussed raising that price even higher, or reportedly is what it's supposed to say, discussed raising that price higher. Uh, as for whether this will, as for whether this will mean Xbox X and Series X will also get more expensive, it's hard to say. PlayStation 5 already got hit with a price increase in a number of countries, and Nintendo has said it's not ruling out an increase on the Switch in the future. When Sony announced its first console price hike, Microsoft clarified that it had no plans to do the same for its current Xboxes, something that Spencer reiterated in September. However, in October, Spencer's phrasing was a bit different. Quote, we've held price on our console, we've held price on our games, and our subscription, he said. I don't think we'll be able to do that forever. I do think at some point we'll have to raise some prices on certain things, end quote. IGN reached out to Xbox for comment on potential console price increases, but the company declined to comment. Full price for major new video games has remained steady at $60 since the Xbox 360-slash-PS3 era, prior to which most games cost $50. Companies increasing prices uh, have... now have cited uh, factors such as increased development costs and ongoing inflation as key reasons behind the jump. Mike, you host a show called The Kind of Funny X-Cast. It only makes sense to start with your reaction to Xbox gouging the consumers. Oh, Greg, it hurts. No, Greg, this is not a big surprise at all. Uh, This is almost a non-story, but I totally get it. Let's talk about it, right? I mean, this is the generation that we're in. This is what is to be expected, right? We've seen other companies like Sony, like Take-Two. I mean, Chuck's need for speed right now is $70 on the marketplace. So it is totally understandable, and it just drives the point that Game Pass becomes more valuable for people that want to jump into this ecosystem, right? You break down that total, right? Three times 70. If there's three games coming out this year that we expect, Redfall, Forza, and of course Starfield, that's $70 a pop. That comes out to about $210, right? Game Pass is $15 a month times 12. By my math, that's $180. So the point is, hey, if Xbox is going to drop three first-party games a year, let's push Game Pass to make it really seem like that's the value op- the, the value position there. 100%, 100%. Unfortunately, this year, we got zero first-party games. So it's kind of tough <laughs> to look at y'all true. and be like, hey, hey everybody. You grounded. <laughs> Pentiment, wasn't that? Yeah, 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 well, you, you know, know, I don't know if that's imagine worth them my charging full game Seventy dollars. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know what I mean? There are games on Xbox. Let's not do this. Let's not. Okay, let's this not thing. do this. But let's just say, hey, next. Did year, you have a Last of Us? Did you have an Auto <laughs> exactly. War? No, no. Next year, they're looking at, hey, we have three titles already planned, ready to rock and roll for your price. Let's move to Game Pass. But it's understandable, right? Everybody else in the market is moving to $70 games. It's not a wow. It's not a crazy thing. I think the key here is they didn't raise the console prices before the holiday season. That was the line in the stand that Phil wanted to make clear, right? Hey, I can't hold back the prices forever, but we want to make sure this holiday season, where we've had an influx of more Xboxes out in the wild, let's make sure you can buy these before. I'm sure next year when we have the conversation, hey, these consoles are up now, you know? Yeah. Do you think, is that, that's what's interesting. Even when you look at the PlayStation 5 thing, it's other countries. It's not the U.S. They haven't gone there because I won't lie. U.S., I like to think of us as the squeakiest wheel. (laughs) All right? You're going to do that to that. Oh, there'll be podcasts and there'll be blog posts. People will be pissed off. So you hold off until that's your, like, you're talking about the last line and the line of the sand, last line of defense. I feel like that's that. What do you think happens first then in terms of next year or just the future? An increase to the console or an increase to Game Pass? Price. 
Man, okay. I mean, I, I think both, but I think if we're going to go with first, it's going to be Game Pass, and I think that will be on the back of the family plan, right? We know that the family plan is looming somewhere here in the next months to year, right? And I think we'll see the family plan come out, which means an increase to Game Pass before we see the console. I think if we see gotcha. the console, it will be next holiday season. Okay, okay. Tim, does that ring true for you? Yeah, I, I think the, the console stuff is a lot more dependent on just the world in general. Like, PlayStation uh, raising the price of its consoles, I took as a surprise. Like, I don't feel like that's something that I expected to see. And I sure. think even though it happened, I don't necessarily expect to see Xbox raise its hardware costs. I can imagine Phil and them don't want to do that. Of course. I don't think that it means it's impossible. I think it's very possible. But I don't think that it's a foregone conclusion that the hardware will raise its price. Software... I, I am surprised that this wasn't already the case. Like, I, I totally didn't even know this. And I, we were talking about it earlier. Not a lot of AAA Xbox games. There, and that, that's, you know that's, what what it, that's what it comes <laughs> down to, right? It's just like, I, I do buy a lot of video games. Like, even we get codes oh, yeah, for yeah, free, yeah. but like, I like collecting them. I like having the physical thing. So I, Switch games, I have a ton of them. And even PlayStation games, I buy those. And yeah, I spent 70 bucks on Ragnarok because I wanted it. Um, but I'm not. Like I just haven't bought any Xbox game in a very long time, yeah. uh, and even if I was going to, there's X, there's Game Pass, right? So it's like I think there is that that other side to it. Um, that that is is the thing that at some point we're going to get a price increase, but I feel like that's going to be more of like a steady incremental increase, more like we see with Netflix over the last of decade course. plus. Well, that comes back to it, right? When we talk about Game Pass, compare it to a Netflix, right? Where mm -hmm. yeah. Those costs go up because they're reinvesting in it. They're putting more stuff into it. And that's the same thing with a $70 first-party game in general. But in general, I said in general a lot there, uh, the quality of Game Pass and what they're doing there and the deals they are making, right, uh, are leading to the subscriptions they want. We see those numbers go up. We see that stuff get talked about and touted. And so eventually, yeah, you are going to have to raise that price, I would think, eventually. Yeah, for me, what I'm looking at is, like, the consumer that's on Steam, right? We saw Xbox make a really big push of games are going to be day and date on all these platforms that you can get it on, especially Steam. Now you start to see the price go up on a Steam page where it's more $60 is the line over on Steam, right? A lot of PC games have not made that, hey, we're on the next console jump yet, right? So now Xbox is putting their games out there for $70. Does that take a hit? Do people still buy them? For the quality, you bring up God of War Ragnarok. Yeah, you're going to pay $70 for God of War because you know what you're yeah. going to get. Now Xbox brings out their big first-party games. Is there a kickback there where people say, no, I don't want that? Or maybe more people go, hey, if I add it up, I should be on Game Pass over on my PC side. I save all that money. So I think really what I'm looking at is the Steam side of things, the PC consumers. I think on the consoles, we've seen this now with the new generation come in. NBA 2K, I'm paying hundreds of dollars for to get the wrong version of the game already. That doesn't run on my Xbox Series X and S. So the console consumers are already dealing with this. Sure. I think it'll be very interesting to see the PC side of things. I think they fought back on Battlefield, if I remember correctly, where that game wanted to come out $7, and they said, fuck no, that's insane, and they rolled that back. Well, that's where it gets interesting for me. You know, Usually when you talk about these $70 price points, you really get into it, a lot of people start complaining about multiplayer stuff. Yes. And so Redfall being included in this is interesting. Obviously, correct me if I'm wrong, you can play Redfall single player, but it is designed to run multiplayer. It is designed to have other people there and run through it. That's an interesting one to see that go up there and them, Xbox, say, this is on that p quality, right? It's back to, you know, we joked around about Pentiment. I talk, I brought up Grounded, which you and I enjoyed so much. It's the same thing of, like, if those were $7, that would be a big thing, right? And clearly Redfall's not apples to apples with them. But as a little bit of an unknown, just a cool vampire game, I don't know, you know, what that actually looks like when it gets here. Yeah, I mean, another one here is we looked at what we got this year, right? And you bring up, of course, Obsidian kind of carrying the flag for this team. Of course, you had Sea of Thieves updates, but you really had Grounded and Pentiment as to two big first-party titles that came out this year. And, of course, people were true? pleased with That's them, the but they days. weren't. There was a Forza, right? No. no. Jesus fucking It was Christ. a very dry year. Uh, we had some good publisher partnerships, mind you that, but uh, nothing massive, right? But this is kind of that moment here when we talk about Xbox has no games. Well, if you're going to make it go $70, you better deliver the games, you right? You and so now they down. list the three. They say, hey, Redfall, Starfield, and Forza, the three that we're going to start off with, then you better goddamn deliver. Right, These three games better be worth the quality, better be worth the time that we see on other consoles and other ecosystems, and you better deliver. For $70, they have to hit. They have to show sure. me why sure. we're doing this in seven to the next generation. Oh, yeah, like, man, I'm, I, I'm not as hopeful as you are. I feel like well, you're right. They, they need to. I don't think that they uh, see it that way. And I, okay. like, I, think, I think that they're like, this is the standard now. Everyone's doing it. And it's like, I don't think that they're just looking at PlayStation and being like, 
like in this case, I don't think they're looking at them like we have to bring those quality mm. experiences because a lot of the third parties are seventy dollars as well. So I feel like there's kind of like we got to just hit these standards, and also they know they have Game Pass to fall back on yeah. for the Red Falls and the multiplayer focused things. And I feel like they're just like there's just there needs to be a level of standard for them of like the expectations they're seventy, and they can uh, choose to make games cheaper. Like I imagine things like Pentiment if they release them physically, whatever. I guess they would. Even if it was digital, they'd still be able to buy it a la carte. It wouldn't be seventy bucks. No. They, they, they'd put they're the not price saying across the board. Exactly, right? and I, I feel like um, we more than ever in the last five years have seen developers and publishers kind of make uh, make more use of the scale of cost for games than I think that we used to see. And I think with that, it still isn't as uniform as we would expect. Where we we should be able to look at a game and be like. That's this price, that's this price, that's this price, based on our knowledge of these games and how they work and what they're offering and all this. It seems like there's other factors at play and it, like it being a first party studio game of like them putting Redfall, like that raises the level of expectation for what Redfall is, but it also is still just an easy thing for them to be like, you could just get it on Game Pass. And I feel like that's where a lot of people are gonna play these games, especially something like Redfall, where I don't think that that, if it weren't for Game Pass, I don't think that game would record break sales or anything, you know? Sure. Um, but I do I'm very excited for that. I'm very hopeful for that because that's our kind of game. You know yeah. what I mean? Go through and have a cool world and make your hunter and go out there and you know yeah. kill some folks. But yeah, I don't expect that to move units in a massive way. I hope it does. Like I hope Arcane mm -hmm. comes out and mm -hmm. really turns some heads. But yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I totally Arcane. agree, Tim. I think you look at the landscape and they're following suit, right? I think just as an Xbox gamer, you see this and you see the three games they listed and the tone. Of course, the price reflects the content, the scale, and the technical complexity, right? That means okay, then you got to bring it because yeah. as an Xbox yeah, yeah, yeah. gamer, we haven't had quality games. We're looking for them to start off this new console generation. We just went through a really bad year after a, a pretty all right first year that had some bangs in it we've had two full years now of this new console generation that have not delivered super high quality games enough at this pace and so yeah i mean i expect the best forza will deliver i'm very confident in that redfall i'm more on the shaky fence on and bethesda and starfield you gotta prove you gotta prove why i need to care about this because i am worried that it could be just another buggy bethesda game and i'm looking for an epic i'm I looking so. for a game yeah, of a generation Thank you, for Thank you, me. Mike. Thank you. Get ready for and also, KFFL. This chair was super high because of blessing, so don't get at me, chat. I, I saw why you did this Greg have time. to be taller? Like, your head, he you have no here. headroom anymore, me. Greg. Tim, tell him that, that was blessing. Here's the thing, all right? When Mike comes in and jacks the chair up like he always does, go watch him on anything. I usually sit there and just take it, but not today. Today, I fought back, and I, I went it. high as well. And I went low. That's we had, why. We had a nice little, I appreciate nice little angle going on there. That I nice do. little angle is definitely a way to put it. What I do want to say... Greg, yeah. is I was dying that entire time as you were reading that story because I'm looking at the chat and they were just getting at Mike of saying all the things he looks like in his outfit. Yeah. And there was just some absolute gold saying like he's about to uh, come to do Blessing's will. <laughs> <laughs> gold. Absolute gold, y'all. Killing the Ladies game. Ladies and chat. gentlemen, if you like our chairs and how they move, consider supporting us on patreon.com slash kind of funny. Over Holy there. Sh we earn money to make these shares go really high. That's really high. You Why can't even touch so the floor. Nobody knows. That's only because of the power of Patreon.com slash kind of funny. On Patreon.com slash kind of funny, of course, you could be a Patreon producer and get your name read. You could get the show ad free. You could watch us record every podcast, whether it's kind of funny or kind of funny games podcasts, over on Patreon.com slash kind of funny with the other trogs. You should hang out live. We're doing the kind of funny podcast this afternoon. It's going to be a great time. You should come hang out. However, I digress. That's all the some of the benefits. It's just some, actually, of the benefits you can get on Patreon. Uh, the main one you get, of course, is ad-free viewing. But guess what, Jack and Jane? You're not on Patreon. So here's a word from our sponsor. Shout out to Shady Rays for sponsoring this episode. Look how cool I look. You too can look this cool without breaking the bank this holiday season. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that gives you the features of $200 shades for a fraction of the price and a fraction of that price during their holiday sales. Shady Rays are premium polarized shades featuring world-class optical clarity, substantial durability, and styles catered to everyone and every lifestyle. If you lose or break your shades on day one, they told us that they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. 
dropped in the lake, off a cliff, anything, they'll replace them. The lost and broken coverage transfers to anyone you gift them to. They'll get great polarized shades and protection no matter what happens to them in the future. They stand by their products and told our team that if anyone has a problem, they throw profit out the window and do what it takes to get it right. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is running their deepest deal of the season. Use code KINDAFUNNY for 50% off two or more pairs at ShadyRays.com. Buy one, get one free. You can get two pairs for as low as $54 at ShadyRays.com using the code KINDAFUNNY, where you can find all their newest and best shades. Shout out to Factor for sponsoring this episode. We all gotta eat, and sometimes having to prep that food is the one thing really getting in the way of your day. With the bustling holiday season well underway, ready-to-eat meal delivery can lend a helping hand. Factor shops, preps, cooks, and delivers to your door so you can enjoy chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals during the holidays minus the hassle. Plus, with 34 meals per week, including Gourmet Plus, Keto, Calorie Smart, Vegan Plus, Veggie, and 36 Plus weekly add-ons, you'll have plenty of nutritious, flavorful options to choose from. Factor's cheaper than dining out and takeout. Plus, the money you save towards holiday fun and you time. And thanks to Factor's commitment to ingredients with integrity, you can enjoy flavorful, chef-crafted meals, guilt-free like their creamy Parmesan chicken and three bean vegan chili. A ton of us here at Kind of Funny have been so thankful for Factor since we've been here in the new studio, and you can too. Head to go.factor75.com slash kindoffunny60 and use code kindoffunny60 to get 60% off your first box. That's code kindoffunny60 at go.factor75.com slash kindoffunny60 to get 60% off your first box. Shout out to Rocket Money for sponsoring this episode. We all love gobbling up content and we have an understanding of what subscriptions we use, or do we? Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost? Most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions when the actual total is closer to 200 plus. That's right, you could be wasting hundreds of dollars each and every month on subscriptions you don't even know about. There's this app we love using that takes care of that for us and it is called Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. The app shows all of your subscriptions in one place and then cancels for you whatever you don't still want. Rocket Money can even find subscriptions you didn't know you were paying for. You may even find out you've been double charged for a subscription. You can get rid of useless subscriptions with Rocket Money now. Go to rocketmoney.com slash kinda funny. Seriously, it could save you hundreds per year. That's rocketmoney.com slash kinda funny. Cancel your unnecessary subscriptions right now at rocketmoney.com slash kinda funny. Number Trace on the Ropo Report. Fortnite Chapter 4 adds Doom Slayer, augmented abilities, and more. This is the one, the only Jordan Midler from IGN.com who has the report. Fortnite Chapter 4 Season 1 is now live, bringing with it augmented abilities, a new island, and even the Doom Slayer. The latest chapter in the monolithic battle royale kicked off earlier today following a huge in-game event at the end of Chapter 3. The new island includes dozens of new locations, including a towering castle named the Citadel, nestled in the snowy mountains is Brutal Bastion, and across vast farmland is Frenzy Fields. Players who purchase the new battle pass will be able to play as the Doom Slayer from Id's Doom and Doom Eternal. Geralt of Rivia. Uh, yeah, Rivia. Uh, well, <laughs> it's one of those where I always get caught up because, you know what I mean, I want to say Riviera for some reason because that's more familiar to me than Rivia, but you know how it is. Yep. Anyways, your boy, Geralt, <laughs> will also be available as an in-game skin later in the season. Augmented abilities are the biggest change to the gameplay of Fortnite. Now, at certain intervals during a match, players will be offered the choice of two random reality augments. These augments give the player certain benefits, such as making certain weapons reload faster or the ability to redeploy for the rest of the game. The longer a player remains in the match, the more augments they can collect. Fortnite Battle Royale now makes use of Unreal Engine's five's newest features, such as Nanite, Lumen, Virtual Shadow Maps, and Temporal Super Resolution via Unreal Engine 5.1. You didn't even talk about the biggest thing. Deku's in the game. I didn't write the goddamn report, but I did Who see did? on Twitter, I did see our, maybe the subreddit today, everybody flipping out that your boy's in there. He's not in there yet. I imagine it, yeah, it, sure. it's one of those things. There's uh, there's uh, tiers after like level 100 or whatever. I imagine that'll be unlocked like later in the season or something. Sure. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, here's where I want to start, Greg. Well, hold on. I think Kevin's out there watching it with a guest. Kevin, I need you to come in here at some point and give me a Fortnite rundown. But yes, I am utterly blown away by this update. I saw Cameron Kennedy, uh, Barrett, I put in the, the doc right underneath the, the trailer link, uh, a link to some tweets that Cameron was doing. And I didn't believe what I was looking at. Yeah. The game looks incredible. The that was, quality I mean, of that's the Unreal the Engine 5. Lumen, virtual shadow maps, and temporal. It really is, evolution. though. I It is absolutely the most impressive glow up for a game ever. Yeah. Like, I remember when we first saw uh, Minecraft with RTX, and it was like, damn, this is absolutely wild. 
But like looking at this, like I thought that this was like photoshopped when I saw it last night, and then I saw the trailer, and I'm like, oh my god, it's real. Kevin, have you played any of this new Fortnite? Because you're the biggest Fortnite fan in the office. No, I haven't. I was supposed to play with Joey yesterday, and like, um, I we we went to the Dickens Fair, got home. I was First like, off, guys, if you go to Instagram.com/slash Kind of Funny Kevin and check out this motherfucker's drip for that. <laughs> I haven't seen Thank it. you very much. Um, and then uh, she had to update, and she was like, let's play later. And I texted her, and she broke my heart by not responding. And I'm not going to play by myself, you know what I mean? So I haven't You're not a loser. You could have hit me You could have hit I downloaded it, Kevin. God. Yeah, I'm in the season pass. for the first day for two days, you know what I mean? Good and he's really you. good. But I, know, I want Deku, for you. Kevin. I want Deku whenever they unlock him. Le- level 100, we hit it last month. Uh, Joey hit level 200. It's crazy. Joey crazy. Joey cray cray. <laughs> well, Kevin looks in, just hey. incredible. Absolutely. Incredible. Uh, send it over to Barrett. I want to see that thrown up there. He deserves his thing. The Dickens Fair, if you're not familiar, it's like, hey, we take over the cow palace. We make it look like old England and people come and they do like Charles Dickens shit for Christmas. And Kevin bought a top hat and his whole fucking outfit. He looks like he's goddamn going to. He looks like he's, he's in the Bridgerton. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's go, he already did that, too. I guess he did the Bridgerton. Kevin does a lot of cool shit. Anyways, does. Fortnite's cool. No, but dude, it's so much more than that. Like, look at this shit. Dude. The thing about it, and I, I saw the Cameron Kennedy stuff going through. The thing about it now is that we've crossed over so hard, even, even me. Who years, two years ago was like, I realized we all accept Fortnite's awesome and cool. So it's no longer like, you don't really talk about it. Like we're to that point again, where it's just like, they're doing amazing shit. The game looks great. They're putting in augments. They changed all this different shit. But I mean, Unreal Engine 5, man, like this is going to, if it can make Fortnite look that incredible, think about what it could do for every other video game. Like I am so excited for this future. Cause like, damn, that is Unbelievably Look impressive. at Kevin, everybody. That's Unbelievably the thing. impressive. Kevin doesn't need go. Unreal when, Engine when he, 5. Look how good he looks. When he invited me, I was like, no, because he's going to go all out, and I'm not going to go all out, and I'm going to feel like a weird, like a loser, you know? Good Lord. I, wish I, I, wish, I wish I could hate Kevin, but he's just too goddamn good. He looks like he's the mayor of a town that he runs with an iron grip. Oh, yeah, he's oh, corrupt yeah. as fuck. He, he, oh, yeah, he looks like the mayor from um, Nightmare Before Christmas. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Yes, that's <laughs> so fucking funny. Good for him. Number four on the rough report. Number four. Star Wars Jedi Survivor will be released in March 2023, Ooh. according to Steam. This is Tom Ivan at VGC. The Star Wars Jedi Survivor release date will be March 16th, 2023. That's according to the game Steam page, which has seemingly been updated ahead of the official announcement. Now, what I'd like to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you're go back to one, please, if you can't, uh, uh, Barrett, sorry. If you're an audio listener driving your car, you're doop, doop, doop. If you go back one image, Kevin, or sorry, Barrett, now it's going to fuck with me the rest of the day. Uh, I re- re- read the headline of the thing. I'm like, okay, cool. And then you see the pre-purchase bonuses. Like, oh, this is like officially legit. This isn't yeah. just a release day thing I got to happen here. And dude, they're awesome. Oh, you got a little, yeah, you got, and no more ponchos. They're like, you don't need just ponchos anymore. We'll give you other cool shit going on. Do you want to vaguely look like Han Solo, yep. vaguely look like Luke Skywalker, yep. or vaguely look like Obi-Wan Kenobi? And Luke yeah, Skywalker do from the ceremony at the end of dude. A New Hope, which is like, he never got to wear that again in any movie. It fucking sucks because it's such a good outfit. It does. Like, real talk. This is the origin story of my obsession with Bomber Jacket. It's, uh, is Luke wearing that at the award ceremony. Sure. And my biggest problem with it, Greg, yeah. is he looks fantastic with it in the movie. Whenever you see replicas of it, they go way too hard on the padding and stuff. Mm. And they try to make it accurate to the movie. I'm like, no, just make it accurate to what it looks like, which is dope as all hell. Okay. So I can't wait to wear this shit in Jedi Survivor. Sorry, I'm never going to remember the name of this game. No, it's very never. Very It'll confusing. always be Fallen Jedi so- Survivor, whatever the hell. Following months of speculation, Electronic Arts officially announced Star Wars Jedi Survivor in May with a teaser trailer and a 2023 launch window. Giant bomb reporter Jeff Grubb later claimed that Star Wars Jedi Survivor would be released in March 2023. If accurate, it's possible the release date could officially be confirmed during the Game Awards on Thursday. Update! We've got confirmation of Star Wars at the Game Awards. They did, in fact, tweet out the key art for Jedi Survivor here, featuring Cal Kestis, BD-1, a lightsaber, and they're like, you know what? The journey continues. Experience the action-packed gameplay of Star Wars Jedi Survivor during the Game Awards, streaming live December 8th. Hashtag Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Let's fucking go. I'm Let's so excited. The, the, the one uh, head scratchers uh, in the, the Steam uh, requirements and stuff like that, it said 130 gigs of uh, required space needed, which can't be right. That's way too big for this game, right? Uh, there's hella ponchos, dude. <laughs> I'm so excited. Look at my dude in the the key art here. He looks disheveled. He does, man. And he's on the run, man. Survivor. He's on the run. It makes me spoilers. Sad, I just want him to spoilers be for the end of the uh, Fallen Order. Yeah, he's on the run from Vader, man. Come he's on, on the run, dude. You got yeah. Darth on your ass. You got to go. 
I love this, man. I love the colors of this. The HDR in this game is going to be incredible. I can't fucking wait. I had such a great time with Fallen Order. And we're close. And, and that's the thing, and too. That's is the like, thing. It's exciting. Yeah. I, I am so excited for a Jedi Fallen Order sequel because Fallen Order was so great, right? So fucking great. But we saw where it could be improved. And I imagine that they've taken the time and are going to make this, hopefully, the Uncharted 2 to Uncharted 1. I know that's lofty, but like, there's a lot of expectations here with the team we're talking about, like with the with what we have the the idea of now with Star Wars and what Star Wars can even be, and with how deep into quote unquote next gen we are. Yeah, I think it's like a perfect storm. We're March 2023 for this Fix game to the come out. Fucking map. Yeah. Oh my god. I that Metroid Prime ass. Like it's 3D. Fix it's hard to see what's the going on. Fucking map. But yeah, those type of things. I imagine that they will fix. And I, I, I imagine the story will be as good and the performance will be as good, which is, and the combat as fun and the atmosphere and everything as, as great as it was in the first one, but just, you know, tweaking all the other things and just getting that like polish of the next gen. Cause I remember uh, wanting to replay through the game when the next gen patch came out and I started it up, played through a little bit, had fun, but I was like, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to wait for the, the sequel yeah, yeah. on this, but even just the uh, improvements that they made there, I was like, damn, like it is a market improvement over the experience that we had on last gen. For sure. So really exciting. Uh, Jor Raptor writes in to kind of funny.com slash KFGD. Just like you can. It says about the Jedi survivor leak. The Steam pages noted that there are, quote, larger areas to explore and more to discover off the beaten path. Players who adventure beyond the horizon will find hidden rewards, end quote. It really sounds like we will see some God of War Ragnarok style optional areas, especially similar to the crater in Vanaheim. Uh, anything you would like to see from Respawn's interpretation of that and uh, what would be appealing hidden rewards for you? Fingers crossed uh, that we can dual wield lightsabers. Uh, keep it up. Jo Jor Raptor. Dual wielding lifesavers, yes. Of course, spoilers for Fallen Order. We eventually find out he's using a Darth Maul style. You know, that's what the, it, it, you get that upgrade thing, but I'd much prefer he had two. So, so say a little episode two style. Yeah. Uh, very excited for that. Um, the idea of it being a little bit more open, like a God of War, like an Uncharted, uh, Lost Legacy to a bit, Uncharted 4. Sure. I'm all about. I don't want it to be too open, though. Yeah, I think even with the map they had and the amount of backtracking and stuff I did for the Platinum, just putting more stuff in there, optional tasks, yeah. side missions, that'd be good enough. I think yeah. you have an open area in terms of the map. You just need to populate it with stuff if you're going to be running back and forth. Yeah, because like the a lot of the maps in the first game were really kind of focused on the linear path through them. And like you could break the sequencing a little bit, but yeah. it really felt like there was a right way and a wrong way to play it. And I, I can see that this one, them wanting to open it up a bit and having it be a little bit more um, like moment to moment, things can be popping off in different areas as opposed to like, it's a very, very, very pretty hallway. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure. Okay. Speaking of pretty hallways, number five in the Roper Report, a Sifu live action adaptation has been announced with John Wick creator Derek Kolstad. This is Adam Bankhurst at IG.com. John Wick creator Derek Kolstad, and correct me if I'm wrong there, in Story Kitchen are set to adapt the Kung Fu third-person action game Sifu into a live-action feature film. As reported by Deadline, Story Kitchen has partnered with Sifu developer Slow Clap after a competitive pursuit to bring this game to the big screen. Kolstad uh, will be adapting the script, and he will, provide, he will produce alongside Story Kitchen's millions of people. Uh, before Sifu fights its way to theaters, Kolstad will finish his work on John Wick 4, which is set to be released in theaters March 24th, 2023. Like a dream come true for you. I just got chills, Greg. This is incredible. Are you going to toss Sifu into John Wick in review? I mean, fuck it. Why not, yeah, dude? Man. If they can pull that, I mean, and here's the thing. They can pull it off. They've done it now multiple times with John Wick. John Wick, a franchise I came onto very, very late. We did in review last year. Or maybe it was two years ago. Whatever. Very recently. And now we have four coming out. And I could not be more excited. The trailer for four is just absolutely incredible. They know what they're doing. They have this beautiful world. And they're like, we're just going to make the sickest action movies of all time. You apply that to Sifu, which is all of that, but even a little bit more condensed into one story that could be a perfect two-hour movie. You add the idea of the aging and the dying and every time you come back yeah. with ages, that could be so fucking fun. The stylistic choices of Sifu, like, I can see people being like, why would we need this? It's a video game and there's already John Wick. It's like, no, you motherfuckers, think about how dope as hell the transition shit. Think about the museum, Barrett. Think about the museum. It's really cool. 
It'd be so cool to see all that like fantastical elements and shit go on mm -hmm. in, in a stylish ass action movie made by the John Wick people. Think about any fight scene in the John Wick movies where there's just like neon glass for no reason all around yeah. them. Yeah, this is going to be incredible. Will it be as incredible as the game though, Tim? It could be. It really could. Look, we'll this see. is a dream team working on this. Agreed. I'm hopeful. I'm really hopeful. We will wait and see, ladies and gentlemen. Number six on the Roper Report. Halo Infinite's multiplayer creative director Tom French has left 343 Industries. This is Adam Bankhurst again at IGN.com. Tom French, Halo Infinite's multiplayer, yeah, multiplayer creative director who has worked on the franchise for over 11 years has left 343 Industries. French announced the news on Twitter saying that he is off to, quote, new adventures, uh, but is proud of his time working alongside Master Chief. After over 11 and a half years on Halo, I step out of my Spartan armor for the last time today to head off to new adventures, uh, French said. It's been a massive honor uh, to have been part of this game, or be part of the game I loved so much as a player and admired so much as a developer. I couldn't be more proud of my time at 343, end quote. French departs 343 Industries following Halo Infinite's big winter update that added match and performance-based XP, the Forge Mode beta, the official launch of the online campaign co-op and campaign replay, two new maps, a new battle pass, the Covert One flag game mode, and more. Which sounds like a lot as somebody who doesn't play Halo, but has heard so many people say nothing's going on in Halo. Mm -hmm. Still sounds like that was a lot of stuff to get added to it. Yeah, 11 and a half years. A long time. That's absolutely wild, man. It's crazy the video games have just gotten to that point that people can be with a franchise that long. Yeah. You know, and yeah, be yeah. able to to leave. So congrats, Tom. Live your life. Go live your life. Um you were all about Halo Infinite running up to launch. And then mm -hmm. you played it obviously and enjoyed yourself, but mm -hmm. you haven't been back that much, have you? I mean I've said this a million times, but My apologies. The, 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 the no, no, just uh the open beta um for or closed beta, whatever. The beta of uh, Infinite was one of my favorite games of the year. One of my favorite gaming experiences of the last 10 years. The game itself, it was fun. It was cool. Definitely didn't keep that magic up. Um, and that's really sad. Going through all this stuff of the, the Forge mode and the online campaign co-op and all that stuff, it, the timing of this game just didn't add up. If it all added up, it could have been something special, but it didn't. And so here we are with $70 Xbox games and hoping the next year will be the year. They keep lining up the dump. We'll talk about this later. We'll talk about this another time. You know what I mean? Uh, number seven on the Roper Report. The Callisto Protocol has gotten patched on PC. If you didn't remember, the Callisto Protocol came out on Friday, and PC players were fucking pissed because it ran like complete ass on the PC. However, before that day was even done, at 8.35 p.m., they pushed a patch and tweeted this. Thanks for your patience. A PC patch is now available to improve gameplay stuttering issues due to shader... Uh, compilation uh, after updating you may see temporary studying in the game menu uh, the first time you launch the app we are working on further optimizations in the days ahead uh, on top of that they pushed a console patch live over the weekend as well to do some things but it didn't fix the trophy issue so you can still totally pull the greg miller if you want and if you've beaten the game go get the, tro the trophy for the hardest difficulty without having to play it on the, the hardest difficulty you're a greg. disaster of a person greg i hope you're proud of yourself i'm thrilled with myself you, motherfucker. one yeah. trophy to go i'm having a great time now playing through getting all my collectibles the system greg you know, they, they don't want it. They, they don't make it that way. You know, you make it that way, you make it that way, you don't make it that way, you make it that way. You know what I mean? Do what you got to do. Do what wow. you got to do. Number eight on the Roper Report. Cyberpunk 2077 is getting a Game of the Year edition. This is yes, Ryan Dinsdale at IGN.com uh -huh. again. No, no, this is me. Well, I think we've had Ryan on before today. I don't know. Um, CD Projekt Red has revealed that Cyberpunk 2077 will receive a Game of the Year edition once its Phantom Liberty expansion is released in 2023. As reported by the Polish website Stockwatch, uh, CD Projekt Red president and joint CEO Adam Kaczynski said during a recent investors conference that Cyberpunk 2077 will follow in The Witcher 3 while hunt footsteps and receive a new edition that includes all previously released dlc in one package quote it's the natural order of things he said it was the same with the witcher which after both expansions was finally released as a game of the year edition and has been on the market uh that way ever since the same can be expected in this case end quote the Phantom Liberty DLC, Cyberpunk 2077's one and only paid expansion uh, that will include hours of new story content is expected to launch sometime in 2023, said Kaczynski. Oh, I'm sorry, 2023. And Kaczynski said the Game of the Year edition will be released soon after that. Love it. I mean, why not? First off, I do think it's a great package, right? If Cyberpunk has fixed everything, solved all the issues, all the upgrades are there. We're getting the DLC that hopefully, hopefully is going to be what everyone actually wanted from this, yeah. right? And I, at yeah. this point, I'm willing to err on the side of expecting that. I think that this expansion is going to wow people. I might be a silly, silly dog for saying that, Greg. 
it's one of those, will it wow it or will they go, hey, this is fun. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I feel I'm like, more expected to be wowed by the Witcher next gen patch in a week or whatever it is. I mean, that's, I think that it, that's, the, that's step one to the process though, right? Remind people that they do love these games. Remind people that they are capable and then boom, wow them with okay. the expansion, which I remember having been somebody that didn't play Witcher 3, the story around Witcher 3, in my mind, is Witcher 3 was great and amazing, but then the DLC came out, and that's when it was like, this is one of the best games of all time. So with this, working with that timeline, if it can pull off something similar, Cyberpunk, disastrous launch, fixing itself in the back end, not to a No Man's Sky level of, of ceremony at this point, but I feel like this DLC could be that, that turning point, yeah. right? And then I feel like it just needs to turn the narrative around for the, the hardcore people that are actually like there for it, that are going to rock with it, and then it's like, what are the, the journalist side of people, the jaded people, going to say about it? I think you can win them over. The game of the year edition, hilarious. That's I the get it. Thing, it is what yeah. it is. Throw it on anything. And like, oh, one award from this company, whatever. It's like, all right, fine. Yeah, I'm sure someone somewhere gave Cyberpunk 2077 game of the year. But mm -hmm. did anybody of repute, you know what I mean, and how that all shakes out that way? I'm not trying to sh throw shade. I don't know who did or who didn't or anything like that. But that's more the, could we have said complete edition? You know what I mean? Could we just said Cyberpunk 2077 complete edition? But I get it. And again, the narrative has changed. People are enjoying what they play for Cyberpunk now after Edge Runners and all that jazz. So, yeah, hopefully they come out with the DLC and crush it, and everybody's super happy, and they go yep. on from there. But mm -hmm. video games, marketing, video games. it happens. Game of the Year edition. Come Number nine year, and edition. final on the Roper Report. CD Projekt Red is sunsetting support for Gwent, the Witcher card game. This, again, well, there is goes the at IGN.com. CD Projekt Red is sun sorting, sunsetting support for Gwent, the Witcher card game, uh, though has reassured the game will remain online for years to come. Gwent will be supported with new cards and esports tournaments throughout 2023, but this will end as 2024 in 2024 as the game switches to a community-focused approach uh, in what is internally known as Project Gwentfinity. Hell yeah, dude! CD Projekt Red told IGN that a small number of developers will keep Gwent running from this point onwards, with all remaining team members being transferred to other projects at the studio. Project Gwentfinity uh, will see a seasonal progression system added to the game that rewards creative deck building, alongside a new balancing feature that allows the community to vote for changes to balance, though CD Projekt Red has said restrictions will be in place to prevent manipulation and game-breaking changes. Rest in peace, Gwent. That was a movement for quite some time. Mm -hmm. How much people loved Gwent. But now we got Marvel Snap and we're okay. Yeah. I, oh, damn it. The, the chat can, went by. Dude, nothing can top Gwent. But someone said came and Gwent. That's good. Came and That's Gwent. very good. Again, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Yeah. It, it's gone forever now. It's cool that they, again, are getting out a year in advance to say, hey, we're winding down yeah. Gwent. I mean, and also, here's the plan. You know, hey, we understand that you guys want to keep playing. We, yeah. There's a community focus, Gwentfinity. Yeah. Love that. Um, but cool. This is the way you handle this type of thing. Because, like, there's just realities to games running forever. Yeah. So. 100%. Uh, just like there's realities, ladies and gentlemen, to the fact that Gwent's going offline in a year. But that's still so far away. Tim, if I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the mom and grab shop, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah! In the chat, Snicks is trying to be a dick and goes, and yet Marvel's Avengers is still running, but he misspelled it. It says, and yet Marvel Avengers is still ruining. <laughs> ruining Greg's life. <laughs> Out today. Paper Cut Mansion on PS4, PS5, and Switch. Uh, Swordship on everything. Uh, Space Wreck Early Access on PC. And Gunya Monster on PlayStation 5, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Gunya Monster reminds me of Gullah Gullah Island. And Binya Binya Pollywog. <laughs> that tracks. That tracks. I can see why that would do that. Uh, new dates for you. Uh... The side-scrolling action RPG where you craft your own story by developer Fahrenheit 213 is now in development and crafts its fate on Steam uh, in 2024. Chasing static searches for clues on all the PlayStations, all the Xboxes, Switch, and PC. No, no PC. On January 12th, 2023, the fantastic Kitty Roo is dancing its way onto Steam December 16th. And, and for that first game, it, I, my best guess is Surugiheim. Sure. T S U R U G I H I M E. That's it's a bunch of nonsense. It, it's a lot. There's something there for everybody. Greg, I, I said this earlier, but I did something unprecedented this weekend, and played some games. I played a uh, a game from out or from out today. Okay. Where we were, I was inspired by the name so much. I'm like, I'm gonna check this out, and I checked it out. Super Kiwi 64. Oh, I'm gonna talk to Bless more about it tomorrow because it's more up his alley. Sure. It fantastic time. Three dollar game. You can play it on Switch. 
It's like three hours total. Okay. And it is, it is exactly what you want it to be. The music's fantastic. It feels good to play. It's simple, but it's fun. Very reminiscent of the old N64. There he goes. There Look at the go. Kiwi Look go. at this little Kiwi. He's doing his damn thing. Anyway. Yeah, this definitely seems like you out today. Gonna jam. Sometimes silly games can turn into fun games. Uh, we ask people watching to be part of the show by going to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD where you can write in with your questions, your comments, and your squad up requests. Today, Kai700 writes in and says, Hey guys, I'm a moderator over on the Kind of Funny subreddit, and I just wanted to let you guys and all the best friends know that we are hosting a predictions tournament right now for the Game Awards. Predictions is a cool feature on Reddit where users are given 1,000 tokens that they can spend to predict who they think will win in each category. The more tokens you use on the prediction, the more you'll win if you picked correctly. So it's gambling. Uh, the tournament is open until 3 p.m. Pacific on Thursday, December 8th. The Game Awards coverage will begin shortly after, and users will start to receive their winnings for their correct predictions. Whoever does the best will be crowned the champion and may get a special flair or other reward on the subreddit. I'm still working on that. Uh, the results leaderboard will also be publicly visible if people want to keep track of who is winning while the Game Awards take place. To participate, head over to the Kind of Funny subreddit at r slash kind of funny on Reddit mobile app or go to reddit.com slash r slash kind of funny. The predictions tournament is the top pin post. You can't miss it. I hope to see lots of best friends participating and everyone at Kind of Funny is welcome to play as well. Thanks in advance for taking the time to read this on the show. I hope all is well. Kai, 700. Hell yeah, very cool. Tim, what is our plan for Game Awards? Our plan for the Game Awards is as follows, Greg. We're going to do this week our Gamescast predictions episode where we're going to give our predictions of what we think is going to be announced at the Game Awards. Um, then on Thursday, we will be live reacting. Who is we? It's going to be me. It's going to be Andy. It's going to be Snowbike Mike. Woo! Because Greg and Bless are going to be there themselves. Hanging out with everybody. Taking hands, kissing babies. Is Ben going? Uh, no, 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 not this time. No, no, no babies hey, to kiss. Mom and dad are going to get wild in the town. Woo! Are we end up in and out with Kojima? Probably. Fuck you, Pears. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're going to react live. It'll be great. Twitch.tv slash kind of funny games, YouTube.com slash kind of funny games. And then on Games Daily the next day, we're, you know, just going to do the normal recap of winners and all that stuff. But Sounds great. really excited, man. Just Can't been, believe this Jeff week already. Teasing. Jeff, yeah. Jeff was saying that uh, he, he feels better about this one than he's felt about one in a while. Okay. Which those are choice words coming from Mr. Keeley. Yeah. I'm excited. Well, we got Star Wars, so I'm happy. I'm excited to get, you know, just hang out for like a few hours with y'all, eat some pizza. Oh, we're getting pizza. Oh, Let's yeah. see what laptop gets ruined this year. All of them. Wow. Yeah. I hope. You know, we can only hope mm. that they have announcements. Worth I, I might put in a, in a rule of everybody has to drink uh, with bottle caps on. That can't, you think that's going to stop me? Sippy cup for everybody. Yeah. Everybody gets a sippy cup. Else. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. And of course, youtube.com slash kind of funny games to go. To kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash games and listening on podcast services around the, the, the globe. Uh, what the fuck? Okay, so Ignacio writes in, it says, For Barrett, the characters on Fortnite's Battle Pass that are after level 100 are only variations of the characters. Uh, so you already no. I'm talking about the levels that are literally have question marks on them. We can't. We literally can't see what they are yet, and they'll be available in 11 days. It says so. Kebabs, get out of here. <laughs> Ignacio, 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 get out of here. I'm <laughs> down for dunking on people. Don't worry, I'm not going to stop you. Whatever. You know. But also, Kebabs, get out of here. Oh, interesting. I don't remember this at all. Sisa says in Jedi Fallen Order, you could use <laughs> you could use the Maul style dual lightsaber or split it into a dual wheel. Oh, I forgot but all about I, that. I feel like that was just like an attack, though. You couldn't like yeah. regular. That was just like a special okay. attack that you could use. You couldn't like actively do two separate lightsabers. Sisa, I take it back. Fuck you. Uh, Get out of here. Okay, here we go. Uh, Ignacio again writes in the Steam page for Jedi Fallen Order says it requires a minimum storage of 55 gigabytes. The 120 gigabyte figure uh, is likely to be a placeholder, considering that the game isn't done yet. Yet, yet. Um. Now we have people arguing over this a little bit. All right. Because right here, Ignacio, again, trying to be a nanobiologist, says, according to its Wikipedia article, the closest Cyberpunk got to a game of the year was the best of awards at Gamescom, like best game, best RPG. It seems the game got no actual Game of the Year nominations, to which Tundra Boy writes in and says, Cyberpunk was given Game of the Year by IG in Japan. So everybody fi find out if that's true. And if so, Ignacio Rojas, I better not see you in fucking You're Wrong for a week. All right. Damn. Also, breaking permission. news that we can talk about more tomorrow. There's a Toe Jam and Earl movie in the works from Amazon. No, no, we don't need that. We don't need that. That can. That's not an IP we need to get a movie of. Don't worry about it. All right. I'm not, I'm a Sega kid. 
Gotta get Genesis with Toe Jam and Earl. Remember that commercial? <laughs> I only Genesis. remember it because of you. Genesis. Uh, Tuesday, your hosts are going to be Mike and Tim. Uh, Wednesday, it's going to be Blessing and Tim. Thursday, it's going to be Tim and Mike. Friday, it will be Tim and Andy. If you are watching live right now on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games or Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games, KFFL with Andy and Mike is about to pop off mm-hmm. to see if the San Francisco 49ers featuring all of us can beat the undefeated Dolphins featuring whoever we know from Florida. I don't know who else is in that, but that's going to happen. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show at kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. If you like it a lot, support us on patreon.com slash kindoffunny, where you can watch us record the Kind of Funny podcast this very afternoon. And of course, until next time, no, it's been our pleasure to serve you. I'm still not.